Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. Now we look at the border 1979. So the first thing we pick out for structure then is the enjambment. It really makes us uh, concentrate on final words. Um, so here, for example, where the mother's actually speaking to the child and she mentions at the end that the items were, sorry, that the that back home was cleaner and beautiful. It really just kind of makes us hold on those words and we can imagine the mother kind of daydreaming as she says them or, you know, really wanting to believe them herself, um, which, is, which is really interesting perhaps because you know the land that's being mentioned throughout both sides is quite the same you know the mountains go the same the rain goes the same so it's probably not that much greater on the other side um, but uh, here to the mother the enjoyment makes us focus on on her beliefs or her ideas between it um, second point then we've got this, uh, this free writing free verse should I say all the way through so there's no real a set amount of lines or lines per stanza or words per line and that just basically allows for a free recount of exactly what happened without trying to make it fit into a genre which makes it a little more authentic and adds to the childishness you know it's the child's telling us this or a child's memory so that is actually reinforced by the fact that there's no defined structure because that's her excuse me telling us uh, you know how she remembers it in that child voice we've got another structural element of the other voices actually um jumped in so here we have uh, this this voice here then we have the sister's voice then we have the mother's voice even though the mother's voice is put differently and we have this other person's voice here etc etc so lots of other voices give us a real range and understanding where to come in at the poem from you know we get to see a lot of people's views and a lot it's very rich for having other people talk to us and we've got the italics here which is the really interesting structural usage um, because it really highlights this my mother informed me now that's very um formal in and of itself but then the fact that she doesn't give her mum speech this is kind of set apart in italics and it's the only part in italics shows how important that is to them you know it's not just something that was said it was informed and it's in italics so this is like the overriding idea this is why they were there this is why they are at the border in 1979 um so yeah that, that's important and uh so basically you're supporting the meaning that's right the meaning or how that supports the meaning is because we're looking at um, exile and persecution. This family have been uh, chased out of Kurdistan. Uh, so what is now referred to as Kurdistan or, or at least what should be referred to as Kurdistan. And um, they had to flee the border into Iran from Iraq because of Saddam's regime. And now they're on their way back in uh, before they're going to have to leave again unfortunately uh, the regime there was pretty excuse me brutal to the um with the kurdish people um so we, that's where the conflict comes from in this poem so this this family here are returning thinking that things are going to be better and if you read one of her other poems uh i can't remember what it's called but it ends with the year 1981 um and then, then you find out again that they had to leave. So it's, it's really interesting. Her poems, like poetry is actually really, really interesting. But um, the, the, the exile here that they've been in, uh, obviously because they had to leave for fear of their lives and now they've come back. And that kind of ties into the whole, you know, one of the other problems that comes about because of war, you know, the whole uprooting of families as well as beyond the battlefield, etc. Uh, one of the other meanings that we look at then, we've got the political boundaries that people have set up because we've got this big chain here which actually divides the land, you know, divides the two countries countries etc uh, so that's uh, the, the the boundaries that we actually have but then we've got nature's disregard for for them I think that's really interesting because we've got the the mountains are actually all the way across the same mountains encompass us all and uh, at some point it says yes here are the rain it rained on both sides so even though we have these man-made divisions by the chain and by the fact that the sister here you know even the sister kind of adheres to it by saying oh look I'm in one country another country um, whereas the girl herself reading us the poem she can see that everything's the same um and even the mum here says look you know in our country everything's this 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 uh, a cleaner beautiful kind of but obviously it's not it's, it's it's exactly the same kind of land so we've got that um the, the the boundaries political boundaries or the boundaries that we set up about things and then um excuse me you know how, how things actually are you know the, the countries wouldn't be countries if we didn't decide to to actually cut them up and, and, and um, allocate them in that way um, we've also got this interesting meaning uh, or this interesting focus on people's feelings about home so obviously we've got the mothers where she says uh, you know it's cleaner beautiful kinder and we're not sure exactly how much we, we believe in that especially when she says the light, light landscape is more beautiful and the girl can see they're the same um, and then we've got this guy here who says I can inhale all this 
person, sorry, here, who says, I can inhale home. So it just kind of makes them feel that, you know, they can, there's a certain smell to home, there's a certain feel to home, etc. And, you know, that can be kind of d deluded in some ways. And that's probably more of a, a, obviously, an Arabic or a Kurdish phrase, I can inhale home. It doesn't really translate directly into, into English, but it probably does work in, a, in another language. But it just means, it just means I can, I can really get the sense of, of, of being home. But, um, yeah, how true it is, we, we don't know. It's, 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 it's again, it's psychological. It's, it's, I suppose I've put delusions there because, you know, they probably wouldn't be able to smell it. But obviously, psychologically, it has a massive, massive impact. Um, I remember reading a report about some refugees when they leave their homes, you know, they keep the keys, even if it's just symbolic. And even if the houses are a bulldoze, you know, they keep the keys because psychologically that means something. So that could be what's going on there. Um, and then finally, we have this, this person here again, the feeling about home where this man um, leans down and uh, kisses the soil. Yeah, here we go, a man bent down and kissed his muddy homeland. So again, you know, is, is the ground worth kissing? You know, he's just stepped one foot over the border and then suddenly the ground on the left side of the border he can kiss, but the ground on the right side he wouldn't. So it's uh, it's really interesting, you know, just the, how we differentiate and divide things up. So the images we get then uh, that are interesting, well, we've got this uh, child with a leg in both countries and just that's real innocent, you know, just basically just about grasped the... Um, the uh, the physical aspect of these are different countries not the political aspect of where in one this family were safe and in the other they were um persecuted and had to leave so that's that's really interesting and that obviously supports the idea of the exile and the persecution uh, we've got the image of the border uh, and the uh, the chain and the uh, invisible idea the political one obviously the um excuse me the abstract idea of the, the, the you know the, the the boundary and the political difference between them, especially in that regard to safety and where they where they where they'll be taken care of and where they won't, um, and also the change that's come with it now that they can actually go back, even though as we know it was just for a while. Um, but we've also got the chain, you know, making it very visual and people's attitudes towards it. You know, well on the other side, you know, we just cross this border, everything's better. Da, 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 da. So you've got that whole like the three level split, like a political one, a psychological one, and then a physical one, and then you see like nature's just disregard this is the next point to come on to nature's disregard for all that and nature wherever it's meant here is um is um is uh, unifying so the land itself is only divided by the chain and the rain rains on both sides and the autumn color on the other side is the same color and it's it, um the mountains encompass them all so you've got so many references just saying look the world around us is all linked and together and it's us that makes these divisions etc 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 so we move on then to um, the language. We've got the repetition of the words at the beginning here much because we've got the uh, the mother says, you know, much cleaner and much kinder. And that just emphasizes to us, again, that feeling that she has about home and, and uh, how, um, how it's on such a pedestal in her head and how special she thinks it is. We've also got um, a lot of sensory, uh, sensory feeling coming through to us in this, which is really interesting because it allows us to look at it very authentically with the child so we can hear people, etc. Obviously, we're tasting this drink we're looking around at the the mountains where we're listening to the sister this person's smelling their home this person's touching the ground down here so it's real you know everyone's kind of uh, engaged physically with excuse me engaged physically with the with the with what they're seeing which actually just presents us with a really rich scene allowing us to imagine understand all these elements a lot better and um, there's a lot of positive words about home you know that we've got you know the, the i can inhale home and the kissing the homeland and beautiful cleaner kinder and again i just think that really ties in with the um, people's delusions about home but also you could link it to this point here about the exile and the persecution because you know absence makes the heart grow fonder as they say um and, and, and that's what we're seeing come across there you know people just really cherish and love their homeland etc in fact as i as i record this i'm in i'm in uh, america and i'm just absolutely overawed by the amount of flags and patriotism that i see here um it's very very different from england and it just brings that to mind the um the uh, the difference between um or just excuse me the way people can feel about a homeland and, and, and the way they can actually just cherish it and it just reminds me how much I think I probably at least I, I take Britain for granted and um, and uh, yeah probably a lot of people do and maybe if I you know I couldn't return to Britain for a set amount of time maybe then I would definitely definitely appreciate it but uh, yeah so that's uh, although obviously I'm not I'm not, <laughs> I'm not here because I'm in exile I'm just saying it's, it gives me the idea that you, you probably appreciate home a lot more if um, if you didn't or if you couldn't go 
go back there. Um, so moving on then to the effects on the reader, well, it makes us think about refugees and why they live, uh, or why they, sorry, why they're in the situation they're in. You know, well, what do they do? How they're persecuted? How it can help? You know, their lives, what they actually go through, missing home, etc. It makes us also think about the similarities of um, people and nature. Why people? Excuse me. Why people are um, in in uh, sorry making divisions between us or in conflict or at war with each other when really you know in essence we really are all the, the, the same you know and we can actually train ourselves to be a lot more kinder and, and like together than we were so just to apply the Kurdish people you know they, they were just persecuted for, for years you know like just relentlessly by Saddam and, um, and and generations before that as well but but most notably recently yeah, and reference to this poem by Saddam Hussein and um, you know it just makes you kind of wonder about how people could be more linked like nature is just linked and, and accepting of it. one mountain doesn't turn to another mountain and go yeah, you're not you know you, you're, you're no mountain get away from me I'm gonna persecute you it doesn't make it doesn't make sense for us to do the same or at least that's that's one element you could actually develop into thinking about and um, also gets thinking about divisions you know the divisions that we have between ourselves you know that cause the conflict in the first place whether it be an argument on the street or whether it be wars between countries the divisions that we actually have um, politically through mountain ranges etc sorry politically through um, different countries and different treaties etc and, and you know where we draw those borders and lines and how we bend them sometimes to actually include other things so for example uh, or, you know on a, an anomaly issue so like um, different countries being in countries to do with a continent that, that they're not really part of or different laws stretching or wanting to change to encompass uh, elements of other country that uh, have something to do with their business etc especially thinking about shipping when I talk about that but um, there's there's a lot of divisions between us and we just think about how we how we generally don't need them um, and all of that ultimately just kind of if you look at it on the three levels here it kind of builds quite quite steadily into uh, into quite a wide and far-reaching poem and uh, and that's where the, the the element of conflict comes in because it you mean, oh, sorry, the main element of conflict comes in, should I say, because at the base, you know, this is a persecuted family returning home because of some conflict. Um, but uh, ultimately, it's to do with the conflict that we, we have as human beings with each other and um, and the, the conflict we could even have with what people are telling us and what we can actually see around us.